Okay, welcome to week four, Satisfied in Gratitude. So the year was 1965. The band was the Rolling Stones. May 6, 1965, the Rolling Stones played to a crowd in Clearwater, Florida. There was an issue with a couple hundred fans, and the police uh, had to come, and the band made it through uh, four songs before they canceled the show. That night, Keith Richards kept waking up with this lyric stuck in his head, can't get no satisfaction. Well, Mick Jagger eventually wrote the lyrics to the song, but the words reflected the two sides of the world that he was watching, the real side of America and the phony side, the side that really wanted a show to go on, and the other side that wanted to cause problems. The title itself is Satisfaction, but the word lyric line is a double negative, which means it's actually possible. That seems to be the topic of being satisfied and finding satisfaction. The Rolling Stones might have a point. We aren't satisfied as we are really sitting on the fence between two sides of our world. We're not sure we want to put our feet down on either side because we fear that one side really won't satisfy us. So what is satisfaction anyway? Well, according to Oxford, to be satisfied is the fulfillment of one's wishes, expectations, or needs. So to put it where I can understand it, I like Ocean Star Buffet. It's kind of like Pizza Ranch except Asian. And I try not to eat so much that then I can't move because that's just not really my normal way of doing things. But it doesn't really work with chocolate, but it works with other food. Well, I try to eat until I'm not hungry and I know that I've had enough, then my body's gonna work and I won't be hungry in 30 minutes. I'm satisfied. Am I full? No, probably not, but I'm satisfied. Now with chocolate, all bets are off. I will eat until I am satisfied that I wish I hadn't eaten that last handful of M&Ms. So something that satisfies me will probably mean nothing to you. What satisfies you will leave me wanting more and far below my wishes and fulfillment of them. So how do we know when enough is enough? And when are we truly satisfied? If we can't trust our minds, our stomachs, and our common sense, what do we trust? Well, in the Bible, satisfaction is used more of a spiritual formation of the heart rather than a physical entity. So often, I think we look at physical satisfaction before we consider spiritual conditions. Often we look at satisfactions as a means of being content, but not really getting what we want. I really wanted to find a new car, but I was satisfied we found something we could afford that didn't have as many miles. Or he was a really good guy and he fit the qualifications for the job, but he wasn't quite what the company needed to propel them into the future, but they were satisfied with it. We often use satisfied for a substitute of fulfillment. It's not as good as French silk pie, but it works for dessert. So what does God mean by satisfaction or are we all in the same quandary as the Rolling Stones presented? Well, with long life, I will satisfy him and show me, show him my salvation, we, we read in Psalms 91, 16. And then Psalms 81, 16, but he would feed you with the finest of the wheat and with honey from the rock, I would satisfy you. Then in Isaiah 55, 2, why do you spend your money for what is not bread and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen diligent to me and eat what is good and delight yourself in rich foods. And then Psalm 90, 14, O oh, satisfy us early with your mercy, that we may rejoice and be glad in all our days. These verses give us a wide scope of satisfy. So Psalms 91, 16 reminds us that life, especially long life to be specific, gives us satisfaction. It makes us feel that our life has value, and with long life we have value and can really enjoy that life. Psalms 81, 16 refers to the physical part of the life and that food and not just food but providing in a way that's out of the ordinary so he talks about honey from a rock i have always bought my honey in a little jar that shaped like a bear i've never had honey come at me from a rock but god wants to remind the reader that his provisions in the wilderness and gave hope of what god would and will satisfy then we have Isaiah 55 too, and it brings us back to our humanness of trying to find something, satisfaction, by working or buying something, and that should satisfy our inner soul. It won't work. Only God will provide things that delight us. The rich foods I envision are probably not what the Psalms are talking about.
but it's food that goes beyond nutrients needed for the body. So rich alludes to abundance beyond what the basic needs are to stay alive. And then Psalms 90.14 brings us back to focus on the God who is the only one who will satisfy our heart, our soul, and the part of us that screams our discontentment that really only God can hear. So how does this mix with gratitude? Well, if we take the time to be satisfied with the things that God has done for us, our eyes see other things. So when we focus on what we don't have, that is what we see. It's the elephant in the living room. When we look around our living room and we're thankful for the couch, and then we see the side table with the magazines, and then we look at the pictures in the wall that show where we've traveled, and then there's the clock on the wall, which reminds us of time. And when we need to be doing things, not just to mention all the mementos in the bureau that I got from my great grandma and all the camera and everything that's in it, my living room becomes a very satisfying place. It's not the elephant in the living room that's telling me what I don't have. It's the simple things that remind me what I do have. I am satisfied. I don't need other things to satisfy my heart. I have a faith walk. I don't need other things to satisfy my emotions. I have friends. I don't need other things to satisfy my needs. I have a warm place to live, a place to sit, books to read, and people to love. I am satisfied because I have what God has given me and those things are gonna turn my heart back to God. Back to that definition of satisfied, to be satisfied is a fulfillment of one's wishes, expectations, or needs, really is to be reminded that God fulfills us. I expect nothing else, I need nothing else, and I am satisfied with the little reminders he gives me to refocus my heart. I'm being truly satisfied rather than sitting on my couch and thinking that I would be satisfied with a bigger couch. So this week, I want you to put it on paper. I want you to take some paper and I want you to journal the things that satisfy your heart, your soul, and your physical needs. Now take that paper and leave it on the counter or put a magnet on it and put it on the fridge. And when something comes to mind, write it down. Then take a deep breath and internalize how it satisfies you in one of those three areas. Now I had my bowl still sitting here from breakfast and it was a combination of Raisin Bran and Honey Nut Cheerios. And it satisfied me with a phenomenal breakfast. Now it's probably not what you think of as a good breakfast. And if I put Raisin Bran on my grocery list, then I would really be satisfied. But it's the little things that I think sometimes we don't think about and we don't wait to see how they satisfy. So be aware of those little things, the little things that satisfy and then let them satisfy. Don't wish for more. Don't wish for the bigger fridge, or the bigger bread box, or the bigger dining room table. Let satisfaction be all the way to your heart and not just end up on your paper. Have a good week learning.